Uh, welcome back, all of you all. We have yet another topper with us, Dr. Kushbu, who has got 31st rank in FET exam, All India Rank 31. And uh, she has been allotted OASIS Center for, at Hyderabad for Reproductive Medicine Fellowship. So many congratulations on that. Uh, we want to listen to your story. We want to know more about you. The students have been requesting uh, to know what is the strategy that the toppers have been following. So let's hear it from you, Dr. Kushbu. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, ma'am, I completed my MS. Uh, it was the end of 2020 from BJ Government Medical College, Pune. And after that... Uh, since I, I remember had... you were telling me you were a gold medalist there. Yes, yes. Um, I, I do remember the important students. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Right. So, Dr. Phillips, on that... Uh... <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, like when I completed my PG, I had one year of uh, bond to serve there. So I joined the same medical college as a senior resident. Uh, and uh, so during my senior residency, I realized one thing that I was, I wanted more academics. And that's why I didn't want to like just uh, follow the hierarchy of doing a senior residency and then being a lecturer. I wanted to join something academic. So that is like, I think around February, uh, 2021, I decided that I wanted to give an attempt to FET or NEET SS and go for academic course in, in either one of them. And after uh, talking to a lot of people and after researching a lot, I got to know about your course, Reptronet. And uh, instantly, I think I joined it by the end of February. So it was in February that I joined the course. And after that, uh, it was uh, like I was uh, listening to your lectures. I think initially we had the infertility classes. So I was listening to those lectures. I was making my notes. And actually, the thing is, during my residency, I never got the time to read the books. Like I haven't really read William Spiroff much, only for my uh, like class presentations or some seminars. I used to read them. So this but is I very had good them. information. This is very good. Let uh -huh. me show you that. Uh, students have to listen to this, that it's not very important to have read the books. If you decide today that you take the exam six months later, it's no point thinking whether you read Sparoff or not, whether you read Williams or not. You have to start focused reading from the day that you have decided. So yes, it's, it's appreciable, it's commendable that you did not get time to read those books. You were a topper in your university exam. And mm -hmm. uh, you did focused studying for FED and you've got such a good score and an institute of your choice. So wonderful mm -hmm. congratulations on that. So tell Thank me more. So so there is no time to read the books, right? Yes, ma'am. Ma and actually initially, like when I talked to a lot of other rankers from years before, they told me that it's very important to go through spare off and everything. So initially I thought I'll read the book. But then I, I like one thing I knew for sure that unless I'm able to revise the book, there's no point reading it. Because unless I'm able to read it, once more i won't be able to uh, remember anything right, so right. maybe for two three weeks i tried to read the book but i was very slow at it and then i just uh, like i just forgot about it and i completely that is forgot how it happens it. first reading is extremely yes, slow if you yes, decide to clear for to prepare for an entrance exam that's not the time you have to open books exactly if you decide that's that right. six months later i have to take this exam that is the mm. time i told in the last interview also that is the time you close all the big books yes ma'am yes ma'am Yes, ma'am. So, so that, if you revise them, there's no point in reading those oceans yes, of books that we have. Definitely, ma'am. So right. uh, my basic strategy was to follow the course, whatever you were teaching, because that itself was very extensive and I was lagging behind yes, in that. Right. Like most of the lectures I have, uh, like I have attended them in recording only. I've hardly been a part of any live lecture because but I will not. That's perfectly all right. Yes, that's yes, why I have recorded video lectures because at your yes, convenience, you should be able to listen to them. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So that was the thing. Like I was, uh, I was following your lectures. I was making my notes. I was uh, doing the questions which are posted on uh, Facebook and even the question uh, which were posted on the websites. So all that I did in August. But ma'am, then what had happened in August, the exam got delayed. It was expected in September and then it got delayed to November and then it got delayed to January. And so at, it, at that time, I got very uh, disappointed with this. And also like at that time, I and my fiance, we both were looking at more options abroad for us. 
so actually in august i switched from preparing for uh, this neat ss and fpt to preparing for my mrcg part 2 i had already given my part 1 in my second year of uh, ms itself so that was a huge twist for me ma'am actually from uh, like september till almost uh, december mid i had already matlab i had focused on my mrcg like i had gone through the rcg guidelines pigo guidelines then the nice guidelines and basically i was doing the mcqs of those books but since i had given like almost 3 4 months to fpt as well so uh, just before the fpt exam like i think it was somewhere in mid january so from the third week of december i went back to your notes of infertility basically because i had attended those lectures till then and i think three four lectures of uh, oncology so i went back to those notes i revised the notes of infertility and i revised whatever notes i had made till then and uh, like i had already uh, gone through the guidelines of rcg so basically my obsen general obsen gyne was covered pretty much covered in that so with that preparation i went to give the exam and uh, during the exam like i would like to tell that the infertility fertility questions uh, definitely your notes helped me a lot to clear and for rest of the questions like i felt like uh, because i had like in a way my rcog preparation also helped me because a lot of questions of general obg uh, uh, obstetrics and gynecology were from the guidelines were either from the nice guidelines or were from the figo guidelines the onco, actually the onco questions weren't much in fpt i had given both the exam neat ss and fpt my neat ss rank was not good at all and i think because for neat ss you need to have a more extensive study of uh, oncology mm -hmm. but for fpt it was i think hardly some four five question that too if if someone has read the figo guidelines and someone has a basic idea of oncology basically the staging and management only that would be sufficient for uh, fpt so that is how i prepared for it and luckily i got a rank of 31 in this exam right so you are a topper in the real sense you were not <laughs> you had not decided whether you want to take the exam or not but you were doing some kind of revision from mm -hmm. the classes and the notes and then you prepared for yes, your review which helped and you took the exam and you got a good rank and then you have your fellowship in your hand so uh, yes, that's yes. wonderful uh, one important tip that we get from you is that reading textbooks is not important you have to be focused mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. to read the guidelines and uh, prepronit of course will be helpful if you are focused yes in ma'am for infertility definitely your notes were very helpful me, for helpful for me i mean one thing like what i realized during the exam was like for uh, i don't know if uh, like uh, for uh, if it is actually true or not but what i think is for preparing like for uh, practicing mcqs instead of doing sakshi arora because a lot of people told me that uh, you do sakshi arora for mcqs but i feel instead of doing sakshi arora along with sakshi arora i think people should practice you mcqs of rcog books as well because right. there were at least five six questions which were directly copied directly from rcog directly uh, this, is, this is very good uh, the problem when i ad advise suggest students that you do mrcog questions is that there are a lot of sources of mrcog and the next question comes which books of mrcog so i think it is the recalls that you have to read because those are standard those are standard questions you yes. cannot read questions which have been framed by people who are teaching for mrcog mm -hmm. you have to focus Just to recall, so uh, yes, the questions that were repeated in FET were mostly mm -hmm. have always been from the recalls only, not recalls, from the classes yeah. or from books of MRCOG. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So you yeah, Sakshi Arora, yeah. I suggest Sakshi Arora because that's a basic book and that mm -hmm. is at least something that you have to know to yes, you know sit in the exam and to read questions that you. might be able to answer so mm -hmm. that's the first thing to do that's what i say that's the easiest mm -hmm. step i that had is, uh, i had finished it in 5 days so you have to that finish is. that book But because we have done it for a pg under the exam that's why it's easy to revise through it right like so we have done it before you have to finish it PG and you have to keep it aside that's yes, the role sir. of those pre pg mcq books whether you do yes, from sir. structure or from somewhere somewhere else and yes, then sir. next is uh, if you want other sources it is mrcog recalls yes, uh, you go to guidelines and then uh, notes from the classes will also be very helpful to you definitely definitely those are the sources that you have enumerated that's wonderful that is going to be very helpful to the students uh, mm -hmm. and uh, one more thing students have been asking me why did you decide uh, for reproductive medicine and why not gynecology oncology and how to choose between fpt that, that's a difficult question <laughs> so i have answered that in a video i also want to know your views fnb and uh, mch and dm Um, ma'am, I think it's all about the personal choice. I was not much interested in uh, oncology, right, 
personally yeah. that's why i i was never interested in test test. even if i would have got a good rank i would have definitely opted for reproductive medicine in right. test test. i was not interested in oncology at all for me the difficult decision was to choose between fetal medicine or reproductive okay. because both i was equally interested in but then practically what i found out was that the fnp institutes are much better for reproductive medicine right. rather than just fetal medicine like there's a like for most of the courses 70% part is high risk obstetrics and i was not interested in obstetrics that much so that's why i chose to go ahead with reproductive medicine in uh, FA, in fct exam that's that's wonderful that's wonderful advice from you and uh, also between fpt and mcs i would suggest that fpt fnb is just two years it depends on how much time of your life you want to give to doing super speciality whether you want to devote four years five years yeah uh, that years of course and then two years of bond and with an mm -hmm. exorbitant fees or you just want to do two years get a good nationally uh, you know recognized Yes, degree in reproductive medicine and do well in reproductive medicine. Yes, so, of course, uh, for students who are sure that they either want fetal medicine or reproductive medicine, FPT is the exam to go for. Yes, ma'am. To prepare for. Right. So, it was so nice talking with you. I'm so proud of all of you all. Thank uh, you so much, ma'am. Again, you are one of those students that I've known personally. So, Thank it was you, nice knowing you. It was nice being in touch with you, being a part of your wonderful journey. Thank you so much, ma'am. Your notes were indeed very special for me because I'm sure, like, because I was not very much oriented to this exam. Had I been doing, had I been studying Spiro for any other book, or had I been oriented to this exam, I'm sure maybe then I would have got a good rank. But I think what made the difference at the last moment was just because I had done the course for the initial three months of three to four months of 2021, and then I had those notes ready with myself, so I could just revise them like 15 days before my exam, and that added to my knowledge of RCOG, and it all together helped me in getting this rank. So I think both were equally important for me. You have, uh, despite not being very serious about the exam and despite still cracking it, uh, you know, you have got a very good institute. The academics yes, and the clinical yes. part are very good in that institute. I know uh, OSS yes. Hyderabad is a, you know, all the institutes in FET are wonderful. Yes, uh, ma'am. You yes. will uh, know how to practice later in life uh, very nicely. Mm -hmm. So congratulations yes. and uh, thank you for making me so proud. Uh, and that's all that I need from you. Thank Dr. you, ma'am. We will stay in touch, definitely. Thank you, so much. Right. Thanks, yes, for the time. Thanks for the time, yeah. Dr. Pingu. All the best for your fellowship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for your classes. Thank you for your effort, ma'am. It made my journey easy, ma'am. That's, that's nice of you to consider me as a part of your journey.